everyone. Welcome to another Field Trip Friday. My name's Steve. And I'm Tanika. Where are we going today, Tanika? So today we are at the North Carolina Botanical Gardens, where we'll spend a little bit of time in the habitat gardens, learning about native plants found right here in North Carolina. And we'll also learn a little bit about... Prescribed burning. Yeah. And how we use fire to manage our landscape. That's going to be so much fun. I can't wait to do it. Sounds good. So let's go. Let's go. So, Chris, where are we? Who are you? Hi. Well, <laughs> um, welcome to the North Carolina Botanical Garden. Uh, my name is Chris, and I have been here for like 20 years. Um, exciting. I am, I guess you could say I'm a professional horticulturalist. I'm a weeder here, but I'm also a trained conservation biologist who's had a lot of experience doing um, restoration work. So I don't come at this from the perspective of a gardener, but from the perspective of a native plants person. Um, and it's amazing because this place is full of the most amazing native plants. And we do really neat work um, in conserving rare plants, educating people about growing native plants and um, gardening in a really sustainable fashion. So. The Botanical Garden has a lot to offer in terms of education um, and in the neat stuff that um, Neville and Emma are going to talk to you guys about, you know, in terms of the restoration or land management and the seed work. So a lot of good stuff going on here. I'm just happy to be here among the plants every day. Absolutely. So are we. Thank you so much for having us. It's a pleasure to meet you and be here in the garden. I'm Thank so you. glad that y'all came out. Thank you. Hi, so can you tell us what part we're in right now? Well, we are in the mountain habitat, so that's why we're seeing stuff like the rhododendrons behind us. Um, this part of the garden, um, we've created richer soils to support mountain plants, and there are more trees overhead to keep it cooler and shadier. So we're able to grow some stuff that belongs in the mountains, but um, we managed to keep it going down here in the Piedmont. So really get the, get the feel of being in the mountains with these rhododendrons. Okay, so another interesting plant here in the mountain habitat is the yellow root. Um, it blooms really early in the spring, and you can see um, here it is making, its seeds are developing now. So this is a plant that if you go hiking in the mountains, you know, a lot of times you go hiking along a river and this is a plant that you would definitely be running into in that situation. And let's see, it's some of the other fun things about it. Um, if you think, why is this plant called yellow root? Well, that's why, yellow roots. Um, another thing that's fun about it is its name. So the botanical name of this plant is Xanthoriza simplicissima. So how many times can you say that fast? Here we are in the Sandhills habitat at the North Carolina Botanical Garden. Um, this part of the garden is um, exceptional in that there are places in here where the sand is actually six feet deep. They um, gathered up this sand from the site that was going to be developed and in the, in the higher parts in the ridges here six feet of sand so it gets the same amount of rain as like regular old Piedmont North Carolina which is where we're located um, but because of all of that sand it the rain drains through pretty quickly and um, creates much drier conditions so the plants that are growing around here are adapted to much drier growing conditions. So we've got like cool things like the longleaf pines, there's a little seedling or young longleaf pine here and some more mature specimens that you can see. So can you tell us what part of the gardens we're in and what we see around us? Yeah, so this is the coastal plain habitat here um, and we are standing in like a longleaf pine savanna which is where you would find things like carnivorous plants. So this is a yellow pitcher plant that's, that we can see here. Um, and they eat insects. They're adapted to grow in low nutrient um, sites. So they're actually getting their nutrients by eating the insects. They're still photosynthesizing like all the ferns and everything else around here, but they're getting their, their it's like taking a vitamin. The insect is like taking a vitamin. So. Um, it's, it's wetter here, lots of ferns, other, um, 
you know, neat things like the wire grass. There'll be lots of orchids in here later on. So, Chris, can you tell us where we are now? Yeah, so this here is um, the Piedmont habitat, and the section that we're standing in right now is the diabase bed. Um, this is super neat for lots of different reasons. Um, one of the things that's cool about it, or one of the things that makes it cool, is it's got this very specific geology, and I understand that you have a background in geology. I do, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I've learned a little bit about diabase, and so it's it's a volcanic um, rock, and so it's it's typically extruded between fault lines, and so um, the the Earth's crust starts to pull apart, and then this material is extruded through that and then and then kind of cools down very quickly and that's that's how we we can see these really tiny fine crystals in there because the crystals don't have a long time to grow as it cools down we have learned throughout this series that the the kind of past and the way that the past influences the present is is such an important part of what is happening like so because this diabase is here because this this these these volcanic events occurred and there's this new rock material in the piedmont as opposed to like the eastern or western parts of the state now we have this whole community of plants that prefers this region to grow in because of that soil that's produced from the rocks as they erode and it's just so cool to see that history that kind of emergence of what we're seeing right now from the past. And also in the past, but not quite the geologic past, these diabase plant communities were more common because the disturbance regime was different. Before European settlement, um, the Native Americans would introduce fire more regularly. Also, there just weren't so many roads to stop fires when they happened. So that disturbance of fires or some of the large mammals that used to be here that aren't anymore, like elk and bison. Can you believe elk and bison in North Carolina, right? So cool. And they helped keep these um, areas freer of trees and more disturbed, which really allowed these herbaceous plants to thrive. So, you know, in Durham today, up at Penny's Bend natural area, you can see this stuff growing, but it's not nearly as common as it once was. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thanks, Chris. So, Neville uh, and Emma, where, where are we? We are at Mason Farm Biological Reserve and standing in front of Botany Pond. Awesome. What, what is this place? What happens here? So, Mason Farm is about 370 acres and it's a nature preserve that's managed by the North Carolina Botanical Garden. And where we are right now is just this cool pond that was made about 70 years ago. And right behind the camera over there is where we grow a lot of plants for uh, conservation um, restoration work. Cool, I can't wait to learn more. So Emma, can you tell me a little bit about who you are, what you do here, and where we are? Sure. Uh, well, my name is Emma. I'm the conservation grower for the North Carolina Botanical Garden. And we are standing inside of a shade house as a part of our native plant nursery here at Botany Pond. Um, and I grow uh, native plants to go for restoration projects. Um, cool. And most of these are grown by seed. I actually have some seeds in my pocket. Oh yeah, cool. <laughs> so, so you you kind of get these plants. The, the, these are these are native plants, and you mm -hmm. get them ready to to plant somewhere. So you grow them from seeds, so that other people can kind of not have to deal with that germination kind of period, like the hard part of getting a seed to actually sprout. Yes, that is correct. Cool. Um, I do all. I take out all of the the initial sort of growing and waiting. Um, and when someone's ready to plant the native plants out into their restoration project, they're ready to go. That's cool. Awesome. So uh, what kind of places do you, do you, have you so far been putting these, these plants? Like, what, do you have some restoration projects that, that, you, that these have already gone to, or are you just kind of starting out? Um, so we've done some restoration projects out on the coast, um, some habitat restoration for our an endemic butterfly. Cool. Um, we've also done... Uh, and so endemic means that it, it, it only yep. lives in that little so spot? So it only yeah. lives in a little spot um, out on the coast of North Carolina. Cool. And so we planted out some uh, plants of its host uh, host plant out there. Cool. So the caterpillars, you know, lays its eggs on that. Mm -hmm. Caterpillars grow up and eat it. Um, 
We have also used some of these plugs for our own restoration um, for lands that we manage at the North Carolina Botanical Garden. Cool. So Neville, can you tell me who you are and what you do here? Yeah, uh, I am the land manager for the North Carolina Botanical Garden. Um, and so I'm responsible for management of about 650 acres of natural areas. Um, and uh, I went to school to study conservation biology, essentially. Um, and that means I get to take the skills that I learned, the knowledge um, from school, and apply it to managing a place like this to benefit our native species. That's super cool. It is very cool. Yeah, and so, so here you chose this spot specifically because there's a particular management practice you use in this space. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Right, yeah, so Mason Farm is this big, big uh, biological reserve and we have a lot of different habitat types here and one of the habitat types that we have are these open meadows and you can keep you know a space like this open either by mowing it or by burning it and this is one that we burn fairly frequently every two to three years we will burn this field that we're standing in and this particular uh, field was burned uh, about two months a uh, little over two months ago and you can see how beautiful and green it is right now so um, we go to school uh, specifically to learn how to control fire and to use it as a natural what we call disturbance technique um, and we let the fire burn where it's going to burn but we also control where we want it to go so we don't let it go outside of those areas. Cool so Neville where are we now? So we are standing on the edge of what we call big oak woods. Um, this is uh, about 50 acres of bottomland swamp forest in the heart of the Mason Farm Biological Reserve. It has never been clear cut. Wow. Um, so very different from where we just were uh, over in that field. Now we're standing in a place where there's very little human disturbance. Um, you'll get flooding and that's about the, the, the biggest uh, disturbance process that happens in here. You'll have wind storms that'll knock some trees over but um, for the most part this forest that you're looking at is what you would have seen hundreds of years ago because it's been intact for that many years. And this is a place where fire isn't going to burn. It's too wet down in there. It might kind of poke around, but that's that's about it. Um, there are some trees in here that are over 300 years old, Wild. which is amazing. There are some that are so big that you know you could put your arms around with three or four people and you might be touching fingertips. Wow. Uh, very, very cool place and um, huge salamanders and bobcats and you know raccoons and just all sorts of great wildlife in here we've set up um, game cameras and captured really really cool critters oh Very that's fun so place. cool yeah, yeah i know many of our audience are really into the kinds of wildlife that yeah, live absolutely. in their communities and i just think it's so cool that uh, we were just talking earlier about how this is right here in our community like we're right. like chapel hills like right there you know right. and, and and all of these animals are part of our community they just need a place to to call home yeah it is it's very cool and you know so we're part of what would be called uh, the jordan lake macro site i know that's a big word oh, no, but cool. what it really means is it's a big protected area around jordan lake so jordan lake has about i think it's forty thousand acres of protected area whether it's um, north carolina forest service land or game land or um, you know, lands managed by the botanical gardens or other, other agencies, these lands are protected and that habitat provides homes for a lot of species. So things like bobcats that you wouldn't see in small habitats, we have them here. Occasionally we get black bears coming through. Um, wow. You know, they come up from, from down east and they work their way up the Cape Fear River to the Jordan Lake area as they're moving, you know, uh, looking for uh, new habitat for themselves. Um, so yeah, this is a really cool place. And like you said, I mean, it's right here. We're, yeah. we're just outside of Chapel Hill. UNC is two miles up the road from us. Absolutely, so yeah. can, can people visit this place? Absolutely, so um, we like to make sure that people get a permit, which is free. You can sign up for it online. That's just so we know who's coming out here. Um, you drive out here, you park, you've got four miles of trails between Mason Farm and the Parker Preserve. You can go from the bottom lands, like where we're standing, to up on top of Laurel Hill, uh, on the top of Parker. There's a, a whole lot of elevation change, so get your uh, get your legs ready and bring your water. That's but it's awesome. a it's a really cool place. Yeah, great birding, all sorts of critters to see. Oh, that's so cool! Thank you for sharing some of it with us. This Absolutely. has been wonderful yeah, been, to see. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun.
Cool. Well, Neville, thank you so much for having us here at the Mason Farm Biological Reserve. Thank you for showing us around, and this has just been so incredible. Great. Really enjoyed having you all out here. I'm glad you got to see the place. Yeah, absolutely. So stay tuned for the live Q&A. We'll get to ask Neville all sorts of cool questions about the Botanical Gardens, about Mason Farm Biological Reserve. Keep those minds curious, and we'll see you in the live Q&A. Thanks for joining us.